All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Aiden Meets Interesting People. Uh, I didn't say that uh, I was going to get a lot of these out very quickly, um, but you know, things happen. So I hope you do enjoy the ones we are getting out here, and I hope you enjoy my newest guest and the first one of season two of Aiden Meets Interesting People, Ted Collins. Yeah, th- thanks for having me. Hey, Excited. here we are. This is, uh, this is your garage. Yeah. What a joint. Yeah. yeah, so this is where we run, like, basically service all our Southwest Track Days bikes and yeah. Yeah, get everything ready to head out to the track. Get them ready so. to run. So, fill me in. Te- I've only introduced you as Ted Collins. I haven't said uh, <laughs> I haven't said motorbike racer. I haven't said a- any of your accomplishments yet. So, uh, fill me in on who, who Ted Collins is. Um, so, basically, I've raced super bikes. Well, I've raced road bikes, I guess, for the last 15 years, I guess. Basically... Yeah, I'm only 23, half of your, so yeah, I was say, um, half your life, probably really over half, well half of my life. life. Um, yeah, so I've sort of dedicated most of my life to, to racing motorbikes. And um, yeah, I've just been going through the motions, I guess. And um, yeah, in 2023, so this year, I've this year. done a deal with Livson Racing to race their BMW M1000 in the Australian Superbike Championship. Right. So that's, I mean, the that's an announcement that's only... At this time, when we're sitting yeah. here, it's only like a couple of days old. Yeah, yep, yep. Um, who knows when I'll get around to this. <laughs> Hopefully within a week. Uh, it'll be, it's still, but it's still fresh news. That's, yeah, yep. yeah. So it's, it's, it's massive for me. And um, yeah, to go from the last few years, I've just been with like a family run team, me and my dad. And like, yeah, yeah we definitely had some, some help and some support. But um, fundamentally, it was, it was me and dad, um, which, was, which was, it was great. Um, I loved it, but it's, <laughs> it's quite difficult. Um, it's a lot of... A lot of work, a lot of pressure, a lot of stress on on the family and stuff. So, yeah, to get this opportunity with Livson Racing to to go that step further and yeah. you know join a very professional team, it takes a lot of pressure off the family. Um, the bikes a lot a lot better. Um, yeah, yeah, the team yeah. is super professional. So yeah, there's there's it's going to be really it's good. another another whole step up. Yeah, yeah. Um, there'll be a, a whole bunch of people listening and watching that won't really be motorbike fans but yep. they, they you know they, they like to uh like podcasts and look love me yeah. <laughs> it's a bit, a bit of me time uh, australian superbike champion that's the biggest one in australia isn't it yeah so the is, yeah. yeah so the australian Su- uh, superbike championship is the the premier class um yes. the whole the championship is called the australian superbike championship but inside that there are smaller classes so there's 600 Super Sport, which I won in 2017. Yes. Um, Super Sport 300 below that. And then there's also the Oceana Junior Cup. So yeah. inside that championship, there are other classes. But yeah, the Superbike class is the is the premier class in the Australia. How many people yeah. race in it? Like, you know, round one, round, first race, how many people on the uh, grid? Yeah, it should, should be about 30, 30 right. bikes on the grid. So right. I think the capac- capacity is about 32. So um, yeah. So you hopefully top 30 hopefully top close 30 to capacity races yeah. in australia yeah is yeah. where you're laying yes. yourself at yeah yeah it's good stuff oh, hopefully i'm a lot higher up well, top 30. Yeah. <laughs> aiden was happy with top 30 <laughs> <laughs> why aren't you guys happy right um tell me about so livson racing yep um this was, it was owned and operated by an ex race you used yeah. to race yeah so nathan spateri owns the team um so yeah he he raced himself last year for for the same team um, which yeah he um, yeah he decided that he'd done his time and it was ready for retirement sort of thing so um, he was he was looking to put he wanted to put a young rider on the bike so I sort of heard heard whispers and rumors around the pits of what was going on yeah, so he didn't, I, didn't want didn't want a 42 um, year old yeah I, no, no he didn't unfortunately no, so um, no I gave him a call and yeah we sort of just ah. kept in contact you know that was probably um, towards the middle of last year maybe the conversation started and okay. just kept in contact and um yeah then just before christmas we we did our first test together just to see how they worked and they saw, saw how i worked and um yeah, yeah just continued on from is there. that less of a bike test and more of a what's he like as a racer yeah it definitely wasn't a bike test right. um it was yeah they wanted to i'm um, still to this day i don't really know what they were looking yeah, yeah, for yeah. but yeah. i i'm I'm went sure there, not an idiot, i went there i went there with knowing what I wanted to wanted to see and a hundred percent I saw that within being in the pit for ten minutes. I yeah. sort of ticked the boxes that I wanted to wanted to tick and could see how professional they were and their their will to want to achieve the same goals as me. So um, that was a it was a no brainer from the start. 
Cool. And I look. I looked up the bike. I googled the bike. Yep. Um, way more than I googled you. Cause I <laughs> it's a it's a it's a good website. If anyone wants to go and have a look at the uh, the BMW M one thousand double R, you can click on a button and it, like makes the noises, <laughs> and you can like accelerate to top oh, speed, lovely. and then you can push the brakes and see how fast oh. it. it it stops. I'll have to have a look at this myself. You'll have to have a look. Yeah, well, I mean, you can do it in real life. Yeah. You can do a bloody suppose. website. <laughs> you can do it yourself. <laughs> do it tomorrow. <laughs> um, uh, so, and then the bike was like a, I can buy it, right? Yeah. It had yep. a buy it now option yep. other than the fact that I don't have any money. Is it the same bike or so is there massive modifications? Definitely starts as the same bike. The yeah. bike that you can buy from the showroom is exactly the same as the bike that the team buy to, to start off with. Um, yeah. There's a lot of changes ah, okay. made from that point, but the rules in Australia keep the bikes very standard compared to other championships. Yeah. So we're we're very limited in what we can do. Yet in saying that, we still change a lot of com- components on the bike to make them race ready. But yes. for your average Joe Blow who goes to the shop and buys one, it is very similar to what we're racing. So. <laughs> Well, That's a bit scary, actually, <laughs> that other people should have this thing. I mean, you do need $65,000 to buy the, uh, <laughs> the base model. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty so, serious motorbike. Yeah, so yeah. the BMW is is a very high-level motorbike, and that, that's why Livson have chosen the BMW over other manufacturers. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's a, it's a very well-developed bike, um, and it's got all the components you need for that base to, to build a good race bike. So. Is it a new bike on the grid this year or is this a, has it been on the grid last year? So or? the bike that we're racing this year is the same bike from last year. Okay. So there, there hasn't been an upgrade that we're, we have available to us yet. So yeah, right. the 2023 bike will be the same as the 22 model. Yeah. Was it um, successful? Like, I mean, yeah, so, I they wouldn't have bought it. But, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, there would be, BMW was on the podium in ASBK multiple times um, yeah. last season. So it's definitely capable of, it's capable of winning. There's no doubt about that. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, with you on it, it'll be... <laughs> Easy. Easy as that. Piece of cake. Absolutely. <laughs> and so, how fast is, like, a, this does over 300 k's an yeah, hour, Yeah, so right? I I think the top top speed would be maybe 310, yeah. roughly. 300, the website says 314, but... I was close. <laughs> I was close. Ours should, in theory, be faster. It should so. be. Yeah, that's what I'm All getting right. at. So, like, you, uh, you will, you, I mean, you'll be doing well over 300 on... Yeah, so uh, Phillip yeah. Island Main Straight, yeah, definitely yeah. definitely over 300, yeah. Yeah. What's 300 kilometers <laughs> an hour like? Like, other people, like, yeah, I've, I've spoken to other people at motorsport, and they quite often say something like, I mean, it's all sort of relative, you know, it's wide yeah. open spaces, and you've, every other car is doing 300, so it doesn't feel that quick, but, I mean, you're not in a, in a car, you holding onto this thing like yeah it. so it's it's a funny one because you would think it feels fast and to be honest there's something that i asked the team to change on the bike which we're going to have when we go to sydney tomorrow but was a higher like windscreen on okay. the bike so when you tuck down down the straight the wind goes completely around you which is yeah. uh, something that i've always had which that to me slows it down if you can tuck in underneath the screen and all the the winds going around you, you don't feel the speed anywhere near as if your head's in it. And you're yes. trying to trying to hold your head trying down the whole time. So yeah. that's something that to me slows it down. But like you say, you go into turn one at Phillip Island. There's nothing around you. If there is something around you, it's a bike next to you who's also, who's also doing, doing 300 k's an hour. Yeah. So the speeds. You know, I love the speed. You know, you're going to t- turn one at Phillip Island, bang it down two gears and throw it into turn one. It's exciting, you know. So it's it something, something that not many people probably yeah. get the chance to do or are able to do. So, um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's exciting. Yeah. Can you, do you remember the first time? Like, are they like milestones? You're like, oh, that's the first time I did 100. That's the first yeah. time I did. Yeah, definitely when I was younger, like it was yeah. massive. And I remember as I grew up, my dad always put me on the next bike yeah it's the day i was old enough like even when i raced motocross i i went to a 65 the day i was old enough i was on an 85 the, probably before i was old yeah, enough right. like racing, always yeah. stepping up and then i'd only just got onto a 600 which is super sport 600 bike 
and he decided to go out and buy me a super bike thinking that it was going to be great training you know get on the big bike the little bike will feel easier and i can remember <laughs> he took me to a ride day at phillip island on this super bike and i come down the straight and i was just like whoa <laughs> like this is this is Next awesome yeah. don't want to get back on that other bike now dad this is this is way too <laughs> much fun so yeah back back when i was younger i probably would have been 16 at that time like yeah to I don't that that bike then wouldn't have done 300, but we would have been awfully close. So it was yeah. it was very exciting, that's for sure. <laughs> it's, just, it's so crazy. Like obviously, you know, racing cars is that there's that speed factor. You've got the speed, but yeah. I don't know. You're kind of strapped in. You've got a roll cage. Yeah. You've got you know all all the safety bells and whistles. But yeah. like safety on these things hasn't really evolved since the day they built motorbikes right like it's no. i mean you've got leathers and yeah. you've got um i don't know what's the big hump the, the hump thing on the back's more of a aerodynamics yeah. than, so what what like it's um not safe. it's not compulsory in australia yet but it probably will be soon as having airbags in your suit oh, so yeah, yeah, there yeah. are uh, a few companies now making airbags that go inside your suit um and yeah it has sensors and stuff and it knows you're crashing before you do, I guess, and yeah. deploys a big airbag inside your suit. That's interesting because so, a car airbag detects the impact already. Yes, yeah, but like, the, the one in your suit has to go off before you hit the ground. It has to detect, so, yeah. yeah. It has to detect that you're no longer attached to the bike, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. so um, that's probably like a big safety thing that is taking off now. Yeah. But the, like, yeah, helmets are getting better, suits are getting better but the speeds are getting higher. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but at the end of the day, majority of crashes that you have on a super bike, you slide, yes. slide for a long time, you get back up and you're okay. It's when you fall awkwardly, <laughs> yeah. um, that's when the damage happens. Usually a high speed crash, you slide, you get back up, it's fine. It's, it's when the, you get those awkward crashes or you catch catch something in the grass or the gravel trap and then you start to sort of cartwheel. That's, that's yeah. when it starts to hurt. <laughs> That's when it starts to hurt. It's uh, yeah, it's one of those things that me and probably many others are just when you're watching motorbike racing and they slide across the ground and even before they've stopped, yeah. they're looking for the bike. Yeah, they're like, yeah. as soon as I've stopped sliding, I'm going to get up well, and get this bike. Something someone <laughs> told me when I was younger and I was like, no, nah, that's crazy. There's no way that's true. Was when you crash, when you stop, count to five and then stand up. Uh, okay. Because you're so used to... Your minimum speed around Phillip Island, say, I think maybe is like 80 k's an hour. So the right. slowest you go once you leave the pits is 80 k's an hour. So when you slide and you get, I don't know, you're probably still doing 30 k's an hour, but you feel like you've stopped. Oh, so you, you, sta stand, you stand up. up before you've even stopped. And you, you see videos of it all the time. You know, stand yeah. up straight back down on your face, you know. Yeah. So you actually need to tell yourself, no, just wait a second yeah make sure you stop now stand up <laughs> find your bike let's keep going but you'll find most races crashing is not about hurting yourself that's not no. what anyone's worried about it's how's my bike over yeah, there you know yeah. like am i can i get back on can i finish the race how yeah. much work have i just given my mechanics like <laughs> that's more of an issue than than hurting yourself all right well let's not dwell on the crashing. <laughs> let's, not, let's dwell on the good stuff uh rather than, rather than the crashing um Australian Superbike Champion, this, you have raced in this series before? Yeah, so 2000 yeah. And, yeah, 2018, I actually rode a BMW as well um, oh, yeah. for, for a different team. So yeah. um, I'm familiar with the brand. But yeah, in 2018, I raced in the Australian Superbike Championship, which, and then I also did um, half, of, half of 2019. Yeah. So, yeah. Right, with, with, with different teams? Or was no, well, that was with the same team. Yeah. yeah, so on BMW for both those years. Cool. Um, yeah, and and th that bike and the new bike? Are completely com different. So different. Yeah. 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 So there's, I don't think there'd be a part on them that would interchange. So, right, so and it's new been, ones are rebuild. It's yeah. been, it was strange for me to ride that bike a few years ago and then to go away from the brand, I rode a Yamaha for the last couple of years and then come back in and all these developments happened. Yeah. Obviously, with the manufacturer themselves developing the bike, making it quite a lot better than it was, but then also to jump on this Livson BMW, which they've done their own development and their own research. Okay. And the bike is, it's incredible how good it is. Um, and yeah. it's a bit mind blowing because I was away from the 
the development for the last few years to just come back onto a the same brand of bike and it be so, so different. What, what makes a bike a good bike or a bad bike? Like um, just to feel confident and comfortable, you yeah, know, like so if, stability if, of it. If you have the feeling with the bike, you can understand what the tires are doing. You can feel where the limit is and have that confidence to push to the limit and find the limit. Yeah. That makes a massive difference. If you're out there and you can't quite understand what's happening at, obviously you're not going to go okay. fast because you're not willing to push it. Yeah, that's, um, yeah. But if you have a good feeling with the bike and you feel comfortable, it's definitely what um, creates a fast lap time. Yeah. So are you, you're booked in for all seven rounds of the championship? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, um, yeah, we head off like right now, we head off tomorrow for the official test. So that'll yeah. be like the first official hit out with myself and the team. And um, yeah, so then, up to flying to Sydney tomorrow. Yeah, Sydney tomorrow for yeah. two days, um, and then three days at Phillip Island straight after that. Is so. it nice to have someone else take your bike to the track oh, for it's, you? It's, it's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> like me and me. And, I, I, I did purposely say, "Are you flying to yeah, Mar- um, Sydney?" And you, uh, you didn't say like, "No, nope, we've got to drive in the van." Like, well, pro- <laughs> dad, dad more than me, but me and dad definitely put in the hard yards for a lot of years driving all yeah. over the countryside. Like, I'm not going to say that I drove every time. I definitely have had my fair share on the plane. But the last two years especially, I've been doing it a lot more myself. But to be just, yeah, I just need to focus on riding the bike yeah. and everything else um, yeah. they, they focus on. So They talk to you about diet and nutrition and um, fitness and stuff? Yeah, well, I've got... You I've, yourself? Yeah, they, obviously, that's my responsibility. Like, yes. my, my responsibility as the rider is to be fit healthy and fast i guess so yeah. um yeah that's that's me and i've got um yeah connor bailey and warnable who i work with as a pt um train with him i've trained with him since 2015 i think so we have a really good relationship and we oh, know cool. know what what i need to do and where where my fitness is at all the time as well so um yeah that's that's my part of part of racing really yeah and uh we'll get off we'll get off uh super bike stuff in a minute but uh What's the what? What are some realistic goals for twenty twenty three? Like we joke before the top thirty, but like obviously you weren't very happy with that. Yeah. Nah. So <laughs> as far as a realistic goal goes, like I definitely expect to be inside the top ten, or like even on a bad day, um, and then yeah, be fighting for inside yeah. the top five, fighting for podiums um, as as we progress. I. Obviously, we're going in with a new project. Um, I haven't raced full time in ASBK for a couple of years. It might take a little bit just to iron out a few little things at the start of the season. But yeah, yeah, as, yeah. as long as we're always progressing and getting closer and closer to the podium, um, mm. yeah, definitely what what Can, we're looking for. Other than going to the track, is it televised? How do people watch it? Yeah, so it's on um, it's on SBS. The race ah, SBS Sundays are oh, on yeah. SBS. It's also on Stan Sport. Oh yeah. Um, and I think it would be on Fox Sports yeah. as well. Lots of good coverage for yeah. anyone who wants to. Uh, they they get do on board. they do a really good job with the coverage. So <laughs> both both our superbike races are always televised. Yeah. So, yeah. You need definitely. people to ring you up and put stickers on the bike or something. Or uh, like? definitely. Yeah. <laughs> It's a great, great opportunity for advertising to get to get on the bike, and you need a bunch of sponsors, that. don't you? Like we'll talk about, you've got a fundraising event coming yeah, up later, yeah. but this is not without getting into the financial. This is not a deal where they pay you to turn up. And no, raise a bike. it's definitely, definitely not like that in any sense. Like I still have a full time job. I'm a carpenter, so yes. I still go to work like yeah. everyone else, and then try and fit in training and and going away and racing and testing yeah. and all that stuff as well. But yeah, to to get a ride like this, the money's got to come from somewhere. So um, yeah. yeah, that's my my job, as well as being fit and healthy and all that sort of stuff, is to to raise raise the money to to get through the season. You know, so yeah. that's why we're doing. I'm doing my best to you know try and get around and um, talk to sponsors and partners and stuff, and you know try and get as many people as I can on board because um, obviously what we're doing is really exciting. So um, to get people on board to come on the adventure as well is is really important. Yeah, hundred percent. Because some people might know, most people don't know that episode one of this podcast ever was your partner Taylor. Yep, yep. Who also races. I'm assuming you met her at the track somewhere. Yeah, we have known each other for. We actually yeah. raced together back in the day. Like, ah. We raced Moto Threes together. We sort of we knew of each other. We didn't talk very much, um, yeah. but we raced together, and it's pretty fun now to look back on the results. From <laughs> that. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's so, fun for you. Um, Depends which one you ask who's yeah. faster. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. True, true. Yeah. Um, but I, I remember talk, talking to her about her racing and 
her saying that like a weekend away on her. So hers is the, the Yamaha R1. R3. R3? Yeah. Three. Super Sport 300. Yep. Yeah. Um, like it could be five, seven grand or something for the weekend. Like that obviously pales in comparison to yeah. to what you're going to be doing at, in Australian Superbikes. Yep. But it's uh, there's cheaper hobbies out there. Yeah, well... Five to seven grand for the weekend, I can sort of You'll guarantee mine a lot more than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but by so, the time, you know, but um, like that's what she, that's what. Yeah, it's a it's a lot of money, and like it, it's hard for me. Like I, I'll put in every dollar I have, sort of thing. But like I've worked my whole life for it, so I'm yeah. not gonna, I'm not gonna get scared by having to spend <laughs> a lot of money. You know, so yeah. Uh, it, it's it, it's crazy. So um, yeah, I mean, if, if people are watching and they they want to get involved in. Uh, Ted Collins racing uh, and and uh, get their get their pictures out there and get their names on SBS and wherever else. Go ahead and do it. Um, go go back a little bit. How your dad was heavily into racing and then obviously got you into it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you you grew up here, and this was a similar conversation I had had with Taylor again. But like, this is not a motorbike racing fraternity in Warrnambool like no. there's not a bunch of people that do it we don't have a track how does it how does it come about that you become so good at something that doesn't be- belong here well, I think I have my dad's midlife crisis to thank for that <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah dad like from when I was a baby I guess he was he was doing track days um just going like over to Mac Park in Mount Gambier and doing ride days and yeah. Um, that so ride day you take your own bike. Take and, your own bike yeah. and basically ride for right. the day. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. So um, it's not a race, but you go. No. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, he started off doing doing that. Him and his mates would go to Phillip Island also to ride days and just have a ride around. And um, in true me and dad fashion, I guess he got carried away. And next <laughs> thing he was just doing a few club rounds in in Victoria. And then next thing he was yeah he did the like national championship himself in a class called pro twins um which they don't have now but yeah he so he raced yeah um around australia in that so yeah and um yeah obviously i was i i loved it from a young age so he'd take me to the track and like yeah it's pretty funny to look back on it now because a lot of the riders that i actually race against now and who i would see as my competitors i had their posters on my wall when i was a kid um Ah. go around to like the ASBK paddock and you know yeah. getting all these riders to sign posters and stuff and and like now I'm racing against them so um, they can I, sign your posters yeah, yeah. I guess like, I guess that's what they call a dream come true but um yeah, yeah. that's crazy isn't it yeah so, um so you I, I did scroll far enough back into your Facebook feed to find a very young Ted Collins <laughs> racing uh racing motorbike very they look like road racing bikes with very skinny, petite little things. It's yeah. Like, I don't know if you remember all the way back. It was bike 455. Yeah. Bright yellow. 415. Four yep. one, it was 415, four I think. Yeah. Yeah. So it looked very similar. And then there was there was a 455, which that belonged to somebody else. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. But uh, what's, what sort of bike that, that So was that was a Honda CBR 150. So okay. um, back, back when I started, um, when you would turn 12, you could race a 150 junior bike. So yeah, yeah Honda actually like brought those bikes into the country as a race ready bike. Ah, so you could just, yeah. you could okay. actually just buy that. So it was a bike, spec bike throughout the Pretty much the whole... yeah, ready to go and go racing. So um, that was a good way for us to, you know, obviously dad was pretty keen to get me on a road bike. And, <laughs> and I knew back then that I had to be 12 to start road racing. So from the age of nine to 12, I did motocross because that was... Right. just some sort of racing I could do but I always knew where I wanted to end up and the day that I was old enough to get a road bike the motocross bikes very quickly got pushed aside <laughs> I think dad always talks about to start with because I obviously had all my mates at motocross and stuff like that so he I used to say no I want to do both I want to do both and I think that lasted a couple of months and then we'll fully fully into road racing so. yeah right and then just yeah traveling what, most weekends or? yeah so yeah we went yeah we went and did as much as we possibly could because the good thing about it was dad loved it as much as as much as i did so we'd go pretty well from from track to track every weekend um yeah a lot of time at mount gambia um and broadford were our main tracks and then we'd obviously go to phillip island winton um yeah. that was the first few years we we stuck around um victoria and south australia um is it big junior like that sort of junior when when i come through we had 
okay numbers, but it wasn't great. Um, yeah. There was enough kids to, to go racing with, but it wasn't what it is now. So okay. Motorcycling Australia have done a really good job at the moment to get yeah, the junior scene way bigger now, really yeah. big. And like you actually have to go through a selection process to get into the championship now because they've oh, got okay. like more applicants than, than they can cater for, which is, yeah. which is great. That's, that's awesome. So, but yeah, when I come through, it wasn't, wasn't as big and there was a lot of different ways to go about it. There was sort of different bikes. You could get different classes you could go through. There was no clear road to, to super bike. Yeah. Um, so everyone sort of took their own, their own direction. And then the, from when I started, the ones that are left were all sort of in 600s or super bikes now, but there's a lot of people that sort of, you know, obviously chose different things in life or whatnot. Um, where now I think the clear road is there to go straight from juniors to, to super bikes. Or yeah. That, like so, the series all sort of stacked yes, together and yeah, you go. Yeah. 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 That's uh yeah. That, I mean, that's, I'm obviously I don't, like I said, I don't come from a place that has, has it as a thing, but yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, we've got Lake Galeer, there's heaps of kids out there, so there's yeah. no reason why they wouldn't be. It's just, uh, yeah, I just can't imagine 12-year-old kids zipping around <laughs> yeah. on those bikes. And they must do 150 or something, those bikes. Yeah, I think I think the 150s do probably do like 160, 170, something like that. So, <laughs> no, when I was like, you know, still um, I, oh, 12, I suppose, you're just, just secondary school. So, you know, yeah. go and tell all your mates that you do 160 k's an hour on the weekends. Pretty cool, really. <laughs> Here comes Ted at show and tell, <laughs> talking about his bikes again. <laughs> and uh, what sort of success did you have growing up? Were you always at the front of the grid? And no, <laughs> no, I definitely wasn't. Like I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't like a a naturally gifted kid or anything. Like there's plenty of kids that just jump on a motorbike and they're a freak. Like it. Right. That wasn't me. Like I. I think I was scared to ride my Pee Wee Fifty when I was a kid. Like I wasn't like just all over it, but. I just wanted it so bad that I kept kept working at it and like I did a lot of coaching like from like I had a lot of coaches work with me when I was younger and stuff because I always wanted to progress and wanted yeah. to get better so I just had to keep working at it um yeah like it, it wasn't <laughs> something that definitely come natural to me but like yeah I just luckily I wanted it enough that I kept working at it and um got myself to sort of where I yeah. am now so when did you start seeing that oh I'm actually like pretty good at this yeah i'm um, I'm winning or or i'm you know podiuming more often than i'm not yeah so we went through like the junior ranks and um like i I wasn't terrible by any means but like i wasn't a standout this kid's going somewhere um but then once i got onto a 125 gp bike that seemed to be the the step um i i don't know what it was why that happened but um yeah i got on that bike and the results started to get better i like I broke the lap record at, at Mount Gambier and I think it was just a few little things that happened that just built my confidence and then from there it was I was able to just you know keep going faster and getting better and um yeah. and then at that point that's when like we entered into our first round of ASBK so that would have been 2014 we entered into our first like ASBK race yeah. um so that was that was pretty cool for me just yeah. to go So that's like so you're in the you're in the garage and then there's obviously you're on a, in a lower series, and yeah, then there's yeah. like the big boys. But yeah, we here obviously you'd them. still yeah. like go up to the fence and watch the super bikes go around and stuff, and just yeah. be like, oh, that's that's pretty cool. And like <laughs> be at the track when all the team trucks are there and all that sort of stuff. Like it was, yeah, you're sort of like you're in the big league, I guess. So, yeah, yeah. You just have to get old enough until they let you <laughs> race the big ones. Yeah, and but you've had some some big success. So Victorian champion, Australian champion. Yeah. So. What, the Victorian Championship was in what what division was that? Uh, so in 2022, I won the Victorian Championship in Superbike. So again, yeah. that was like the highest level in, in Victoria. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, obviously going back to 2017, which like definitely my biggest achievement so far is winning the Australian 600 Supersport Championship. So yeah. that, was, that was massive. Like, yeah, like it was a lot further than as a kid I ever thought I could go um, yeah. to, to know that we were the best rider all year um, and to get to the end and actually win the championship that was like, <laughs> it still like gives me goosebumps now thinking about that day and like you sort of, um, it's funny you think about it and I wish, I wish now I could go back and do it again because there's so many like I'd 
I'd appreciate it so much more. But at the time, it yeah. was just like, all right, tick that off. Next, what's next? What's ah, next? Like okay. you always yeah, just yeah, yeah. you wanted more rather than you just saw it as a stepping maybe just stone more than a soaking it in and being like, hey, I just I just actually did that. That was that was pretty yeah. cool. So you you were racing super bikes in 20 the australian super bikes that yep. one in 2019 yes yeah and then obviously covid came and and sort of ruined a lot of stuff but yep. probably arguably a couple of big crashes i know i knew we said before i should stop talking about crashes but i yeah. think we, we do want to hit this yeah you had a couple of big accidents yeah yeah that were not just serious on the day but yeah. quite serious for months afterwards yeah yeah Fill me in on the, I mean, I don't know, where you, you start on the first one and then go to the yeah, second one? Yeah, so or? basically, it all started around two in 2019 and um, we'd had some sort of issues at the start of the season and um, I'd just been building um, and then, yeah, we come into round two and it was a bit of a funny situation, like going into a lot of detail, but the rain was coming on the Friday practice and the way the championship works is you have to be inside the top nine in practice to then get yourself into qualifying two, like you get yourself into that next qualifying session, but also right. like you just want, yeah. you just want your name as high as possible. So it was basically five minutes of the session to go. We knew the next session was going to be rained out. So it was like now and ever. So we put a brand new tire in, went out to do one last lap of the day, basically as fast as I possibly could. And you could see through the sectors on the data, like I was nearly a second faster than I'd been all day. Like it was, yeah, it really was gonna be the best lap, but obviously that's when it always happens, isn't it? So okay. come out of the last corner and um, yeah, just lost the rear a little bit, but it sort of flicked me quite awkwardly. Um, it was just like one of those strange yeah. situations. Like I said before, you fall awkwardly. I, yeah. It wasn't like a normal crash, but anyway. You, it, you didn't really feel it coming? It just No, nah, I didn't, yeah. didn't feel it coming at all. It just, we changed something on the bike since the last round. So maybe I didn't quite, wasn't familiar enough with it. And um, yeah, I ended up having like pretty much a big high side where you get flicked up in the air and the, the bike actually went over the top of the pit wall and landed yeah. in the middle of pit yeah. lane. Like the photos are pretty gnarly. I've got, I've got some... And, I've got um, some good photos. Yeah, there. I sort of just slid. I slid. I hit my. I think I hit my head on the ground and then slid head first into a concrete wall, which I didn't hit it like super hard. But yeah, I, I, the, the thing that confused me and I didn't understand was I jumped straight back onto my feet and jumped over the wall to get into it. Like there was bikes coming straight at me. I was laying in the middle of the straight yeah. basically, so I had yeah. to jump the fence, get myself safe, and then laid down. And I was like, oh, you know, my foot's a bit sore think i'm okay so they took me back to the medical center yeah no like you're fine you yeah. sprained your you ankle or whatever yeah. like you're lucky well, cool righto no worries they checked me over like they got a really good medical team they checked me over properly anyway so we went back to the the house that night and i was fine got up the next day went and did qualifying maybe felt a little bit off but i just thought my confidence had been rattled a little bit you know having yeah. a big crash and then on sunday like race day I made some really strange mistakes that were something I'd never do. Like I actually forgot to put my bike in gear off the start. Like I went to take <laughs> off in neutral and it was like, oh, I've no. never, never done anything like that before. It was yeah. just, yeah, some really strange things happened. I didn't feel okay, but I kept just putting it back to, I was a bit rattled from the crash and maybe yeah. it was, yeah, my confidence had taken a hit and stuff like that. And it wasn't till that night, I was like, no, nah, there's there's something wrong here. I'm I'm not okay. So ended up, I think I went went home, just drove home from Wakefield, and then went to the doctor when I got home, sort of thing. And then that was when I started to understand what a delayed concussion was. Yeah. And still now I don't fully understand it, but no. yeah, that that put me out. I think the next round was maybe a month away. So basically, did what the doctor said, tried to rest up a bit, but it's one of those things where it's really hard to understand where you're at. It's not like a broken bone. You can't just x-ray it and be like, oh yeah, that's it back tweaks. together now. Yeah, yeah. You're right to go. So me being young and stupid and thinking that I had to do whatever I, whatever it took to keep my seat in the championship. And yeah, I um, yeah, basically went to saw another doctor, got a clearance to, to do the next race. And yeah, I had another and because I was I was there racing again and I wasn't I still wasn't right. I couldn't I couldn't concentrate, I couldn't focus, 
I still yeah. couldn't really see properly, but I was like, no, nah, I'm going to go is, out. Is this and... stuff that you notice, like, so you're saying a month in between crash one and, and yeah. what's coming up as crash number two. Is that, did you notice that in like day-to-day life? Yeah, like I, I, I don't think I, I, that whole part of my life, I don't remember much. Like it's wow. this weird time and I, I think back to it now and I'm like, I, it yeah. was like probably six months of my life that nearly is like, not in my memory at all like i just don't really know what was going on yeah. but i can definitely remember like laying in bed not just doing nothing like i couldn't watch as soon as i turned the tv on i'd be dizzy be like feel like i was gonna throw up like i got to a point i couldn't even like listen to the radio or anything like that that was enough like stimulation on my brain to to make me feel sick sort of thing so it was yeah it was really strange and then i'd start to get better but when you get when i got tired i could only do stuff for maybe like half a day and I'd get tired and then go back to square one sort of thing. So I just couldn't really understand where I was at because you'd feel okay. So you'd do something and then you'd feel worse again. Like it was, it was really, really strange. Yeah. So yeah, anyway, I turned up to the next race. Definitely shouldn't have been there. I shouldn't have been even riding a motorbike, let alone yeah. racing one at But at the time you're like, speed, this is what races yeah. do. Races crash, like, races you know, get back you, on. You get you get injured. Yeah. You just you just turn up because that's what you do. I need a. You're only as good as your last race. So if yeah. I'm if I'm not there, someone else will be on my bike, and that'll be it, sort of thing. So yeah, I turned up, and I was further back in the field than definitely what I should have been. Yeah. Um, because I wasn't. I wasn't so qualifying. Okay, wasn't, wasn't okay, yeah. and I actually qualified good. I I looked up the results again the other day, and I was like, man, that was not a bad qualifying. So <laughs> for something you can't remember, somehow I got one lap out of the bag that was okay. But yeah, in the races, I was I was really far back, and then um another rider actually crashed like in front of me. It, I don't really think like I shouldn't have been that far back, so I shouldn't have been in that accident. But okay. someone else crashed in front of me, and I had nowhere to go, and I hit their bike, and. Like I hit my head in the exact same spot. You can sit the two helmets next to each other and it's the same spot oh. where I hit my head. And like I just remember laying there and like I could just see stars for so long. Like I couldn't I couldn't get up. I was like, nah, this is this is pretty bad now. And yeah. then yeah, that put me out for another another few months, sort of thing. But So same thing, you came back home. Yeah. yeah. But just... I, I knew at least I knew this time like this is what's happening, so I didn't keep racing or yes. anything like that i was just like no nah, i'm done that's it but yeah I, I tried to follow the doctor's orders and rest for as long as i had to rest for and then get gradually like i think i started to go to work for a couple of hours a day and then i'd do half a day and like i built built yeah. myself up like exactly like i should um try to do I went and saw like all these different specialists trying to you know eat the right things to so do like MRI brain. scans yeah, and stuff like so checking many, out what's going so on. So many scans, so like everything yeah. you could think of, and no one could really tell me what was going on. No yeah. one could understand it. No one could give me the answers. Like I went through like I got like like Taylor would know more than anyone else. Like just really bad depression. Like I just I yeah. couldn't function like I normally would, and everything was hard. Like I'd someone would say something to me and I'd just snap at them instantly. Uh, like I turned into someone like completely different. Like it was, it was actually like terrible. Like yeah, you could look, think back on it. Yeah. And it was like, that was a terrible time of my life. And then obviously because of that, like I kept trying to race. Like I, I went to another test in Queensland and it was another disaster. And then basically like, like I wasn't a, a good enough rider anymore. So like I lost my ride basically. Yeah. And then that didn't help my mental side of things and then that probably like exacerbated if, if yeah. i was in a if my head was good and you had bad news like that or whatever you could deal with it but i was in a state where i couldn't deal with it and so right everything was so much worse than it should have been and it just kept snowballing and mm. then i couldn't get back to my normal life because it was hard to even just go to work and i couldn't drive a car i kept like it was just, there was all these things going on that were just making it so much harder than it needed to be. Yeah. And then, yeah, I got to a point where I was like, oh, I'm not even racing anymore. Like, what am I going to do? And and when I did, every time I did try and get back, just riding even on like my old 600, a bike that I loved, like I was, I was so far off the pace everywhere we went because yeah. like still now, like I think it was because my brain hadn't healed properly and it couldn't i couldn't deal with the speed and how quickly i had to think and yeah, it all just, just wasn't happening and, time and it, like yeah. yeah i 
went through a stage where like every time I'd drive in traffic or whatever, I wouldn't notice the car in front of me had stopped. And like, there was just all no. this stuff that just like it affected me for such a long time. How long for? It would have been probably like, it was probably 18 months before I started to be like, nah, like I think I'm, I think I'm all good now. Like, 18 months. Yeah. yeah from so, the first crash. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a, it was a really long time and luckily I say luckily, it probably wasn't luckily, but like COVID probably helped because it there was no racing there was no happening racing anyway. There yeah. was there was nowhere I had to be. Yeah. I could probably just have a bit more of like a low key life for a while, um, stay home a lot, and just work on getting better. I guess. Yeah. So I think yeah, in a way, COVID actually helped me a lot. But then once I was like, okay, um, I am actually good now. I'm like I could go to a track on a bike and, and go fast again and felt felt comfortable. But then it was a matter of like, all right, well, I'm so far out of the championship now. Like my name's not in the mix anymore. Yeah, yeah, so right. so yeah. what do I do now? How names, do I how do I get back in that? Into... Only things I've got to think about now is like I make sure that I put myself in a in a really good helmet and um just yeah, let's just think about it a little bit different. But yeah, running um our southwest track days now like if if someone if someone if i see a crash and someone hits their head i'm like pack it up like it's not worth it just pack it up rest Uh. make sure you're okay and um (laughs) and we'll go again another day sort of Uh. thing so well uh thanks for that lovely segue into (laughs) getting off getting off the horribilities of uh concussions and and what goes on but um yeah i guess you just need to you need to know that you need to look after yourself on yeah and it, it seems to me just the, the way you talk about it is that, you know, you, you can sense it now. You can, you know what it is. Yeah. And if something needs to stop or you need to peel back for a, a race or whatever, then you seem yeah. more, I definitely, more willing to do it even, rather than go like, strap me on, I'm going again. Even you know? now, I think from being a 18 year old who just wanted nothing more than to race a super bike, like obviously yeah. I still have that same drive now. But I would understand if I had if I had an accident and I hurt myself and I was like, I it, I would know now when to make the call of I'm not in the yeah. position to race this next race. Where back then I was probably young and stupid. Yeah. Like it's 100%. as simple as yeah. that. I yeah. just it, it didn't matter if my leg was hanging off. I probably would still rode the bike. Yeah. So yes. um yeah, I, I think I just know now the, <laughs> the what the consequences can be, and I'd probably make a, a smarter decision. Yeah. Um, right, so you did. You, you said that you run. Uh, you, you and and Taylor have a little a little business. Yeah, a little. Uh, yeah. Well, I shouldn't say a little business. That sort of uh, makes it sound like it, it is. But maybe, I mean, maybe we could call it growing. Growing business. That's much better. Well, you should be doing this. <laughs> <I> should... <laughs> uh, yeah, you have a, a growing business called Southwest Track Days. Yeah, and I mean you teach people how to ride, ride, and yeah. race. Yeah. yeah. So um, basically we. We have high bikes. Um, There's which one people can use. Is that one? Yeah, that's one of them right there. So um, look at that KDM. Yeah. Um, so we run out at the the go kart track here in Warrnambool. That was that was where we started. Um, yeah. Wednesday nights, like over over summer when the weather's good, um, and then yeah we we ventured out to Mac Park in Mount Gambia. So it's a full size track and started over there. And then just cool. in the last sort of few months, I guess we've um we've got Broadford over in in Victoria as well. Yeah. Um, so now, where is that like Gippsland somewhere? Or? Uh, no. Uh, I don't know. I don't like know. Like nor- north of Melbourne on the Hume, sort of like oh, near yeah. Kilmore, okay. um, that sort of area. So yeah. um, yeah, that's it's still not too far away for us, but it's close to Melbourne, so yeah. it opens opens our our market up to a whole another group of of riders, sort of thing. So yeah. So people, you, you can hire those ones and learn how to ride them. Yeah. So or, or people bring their own bikes. Yeah, right? exactly. And we we've had people from from beginners to racers to road riders who want to want to be safer on the road yeah. um people that want to go faster people that just want to learn like we cater for everyone and sure. it's yeah it's super rewarding actually like me and taylor obviously rid, ridden and raced motorbikes our whole life so to just like give back some of that knowledge and try and help people speed up their process of, of learning and also just having a whole lot of fun yeah okay, so that's really what it's about <laughs> is going out to the track and having a lot of fun but because because our days are coaching um, obviously it's like in a, in a safe way where you get to learn the, the correct technique from the start instead of having, having like developing your own bad habits and then not yeah. being able to change. So, <laughs> so a bit of talent out there in Wannable kids who are yeah. like, not, I shouldn't say kids, cause I'm assuming you don't rent them out to kids, but, 
Uh, I mean, yeah, we've had been... we've actually had a lot of guys now who weren't into road. Well, I'd say weren't into it, but didn't do road didn't racing. Race. Yeah. Um, and now, yeah, they're getting they're getting into it. Um, yeah. Um, like you know, building building their skill levels to get ready to go racing, sort of thing. Like it's yeah. We're starting to build our own community here in Warrnambool of road bike That's riders cool. yeah. on the track, sort of thing. Like actual track days. You know, we're building our own community of people who are who are into that sport, and it's 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 good for us because, like, you're immortable and you you do track days, and people are like, what, yeah. what's that? Where now we, we can actually do it here, which is um, something like me and Taylor should be proud of because it's what we love, and we've sort of made it possible to do it in Warnable, which is 100%. really cool. And so, how, how many of those have you got? Uh, we've got three of those. Yeah. Um, that we hire out, and then me and Taylor have got our own bikes that we ride out there, so so yeah. we can ride around with everyone and. And watch what they're doing and yeah. help them out. <laughs> oh, that's my bike. What's that one? <laughs> that, that's, uh, that's my. That's mine actually. That's my R three. So, yeah. <laughs> that'd go pretty quick around the uh, the uh, Wannable go kart track. I'd imagine. It's got the lap record that one. Does it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eight seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I claim the lap record faster myself, than a go kart. So. Faster than no, a go kart around there? No, no, we're nowhere near it. They're too um, sticky. Yeah, had, we had someone out there in a go kart the other day, and I actually asked them. I was like, "What lap time do you do?" And they told me. And I, then they asked me what lap time I can do, and I was like, "Ah, oh, forgot yeah. actually. Yeah. <laughs> Can't remember now." That's rude, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, oh, very good. <clears throat> um, so right, we'll finish up on that one. So you guys. Are you still doing them or is you yeah, finished yeah. Wednesday now? No, no still so we're still Wednesday. going um, just with the the racing schedule. Um, right. We're not every Wednesday night. We yeah. sort of just advertise them. But it's booking. I mean, they're it's, always full anyway. Online, so people yeah. need to book yeah. in anyway. So <laughs> got to the, go down their website and um, yeah, check it out. How many people a night do you take? Um, in the, At the Warrnambool go-kart track, we can have up to 12. Yep. Um, and then <clears throat> 24 at, at the other oh, tracks. So, yeah. Yeah. Because oh, big, bigger tracks. So. Yeah. And um, yeah, we, we don't want to make them too big because obviously like we want to keep the, keep the coaching sort of personal and on one-on-one yeah. level. So. Boutique. Yeah, that's it. Boutique, that's they it. call that. <laughs> uh, all right. So we'll just about wrap it up. You guys have got a, a, a huge task to get you on to the super bike. I mean, you've done the, you've done all, all the hard work as far as being a, uh, an amazing racer. Um, but we spoke earlier on it. It's, it's not, it's not a free ride. It's, no. you don't get, it's not a salary. You don't get paid to race this thing. No, um, you, you've got to, you've got to cough up some money yourself. So it's, yeah, it's like a, it's like an AFL footballer, you know, turning up to preseason <laughs> with a, a wad of cash going like, here's my money to play. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a bit similar. To that. So you're running a, a fundraising night. Yep. yep. I'm going to get this podcast edited <laughs> and out. With plenty of time before the fundraising night. How long have I got? A week. <laughs> <laughs> so when's it on? So it's the 9th of February um, at the City Memorial Bowls Club from 6pm. So we're going to have my my race bike for this year is going to yeah. be there on display. The new BMW. And um, yeah. some, some team members there also to, to have a chat and tell you what it's all about. Cool. Also my 2017 um, championship winning bike will be there. So um, that will be on display as well. And um, yeah, we're going to have like heaps of stuff for, for ra- um, up for raffle. Um, we're going to have some really cool stuff to auction off as well. Um, so there'll be plenty of go- plenty going on. And um, yeah. yeah, we've got live music as well. So it should just be like a nice, nice fun night out of, out of the house. And yeah. Um, yeah, hopefully we can raise some funds to, to get me going for the season. Get you going for the season. Sounds amazing. Uh, I realise that camera's turned off, so we'll have to figure out when that went. Is that one still, oh, still going? still going. Look at that. You're going good. Uh, Ted, all the best. Uh, I, I think it's, it's amazing. It's fantastic to have a, a local uh, on, on track, and that's why I was very happy when you said that I can watch it on SBS. Yeah. I, I generally stick to KO, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get off that. Yeah. I'm going to get onto SBS. I'm going uh, to watch you race. And uh, yeah, I reckon all the water will get behind you and... Good luck. Thank you. Thanks for having me on.